tall poppy refers to someone who is noticeably successful, defined as wealthy, prestigious, influential, ranked, or even born, and who may attract hostility, envious attention, or malice. Tall poppy syndrome, TPS, is the psychological condition where some people hold someone in contempt in order to cause them to fail or to suffer disgrace by trim, cutting him or her down to size. Even though TPS has been documented in most countries using a variety of metaphors, words, and phrases, it is rarely mentioned in the United States. For every sin, there is a virtue. So I'd love to hear more about them. What are they? The definition of an emotion is one thing, but there's also the way the psychologist looks at emotion. They just call an emotion a functional state. They just leave it at that, which is nice. But I actually like the positive side of an emotion and the negative side. So envy is my favorite emotion. I think it's the most common emotion. It's an emotion that's always going on. I mean, when you first see somebody, the comparison emotion is on. You're looking at who they are, their physique, their clothes. You know, you're sadly forming an opinion on them. The emotion I studied the most was the comparison emotion, envy. Now, envy is divided into two things, good envy and bad envy. And Aristotle did that clear back in ancient Greece. So we've only refined that definition. He looked at that concept way back. And the good envy then is to look at your neighbor and he has a nice home and neighborhood pride. So the good envy would be, well, I want my home and my yard to be as nice as him's. So you, whatever you do, hire somebody, work on it yourself, but you and try and prove yourself in your home to be equal to your neighbor. That's a very positive thing, and that's very positive for all America. If you're a tennis player, you don't get somebody to go play with that's worse than you. You're never going to prove yourself. That's why we have statues, is not adoration, but emulation. They did usually something meaningful, something better than the rest of us. And so you look at that person and you want to improve yourself. Unfortunately, that takes a lot of work and people don't always do that. It's much easier. And then we had religion come in, specifically Catholicism, because I was uh, raised in a religious Irish Catholic family. And the emotion of envy is is a negative and one of the seven deadly sins. So the negative emotion is coveting somebody's wife, coveting somebody's goods. And you look at your neighbor and you maybe have a little low self-esteem and you, your mind actually controls your emotions. And so in your mind, you make a conscious decision that you're not going to emulate them positively and try and prove yourself or your home. It can be laziness, which is also a deadly sin. That's one of the seven, laziness, uh, which is the cause of bad envy and the coveting. And you try either destroy some of their, maybe their car, as we talked the first time, we you scratch key the car or you punch a tire out. Uh, you're actually trying to destroy their happiness but that's a positive bad action, meaning that you take some direct action. And also you can just do disparaging remarks to the neighborhood about why you think that person's a bad person. So that's bad envy. And unfortunately that drives much of America. We're a meritocracy. And if we can improve ourselves at work, we have trouble climbing the ladder of success and competing for the next uh, job opening. The easier thing to do is cut the other person down rather mm -hmm. than improve yourself. And so that is the negative emotion or one of the seven deadly sins. Now the seven deadly sins have become uh, extremely important to me. The seven deadly sins were actually described by Pope Clement in the fourth century. Strangely enough, it was the guide to the monks who lived in a monastery. I don't know why you'd have to tell the monks how to behave when they should be praying every day. But anyway, and the seven deadly sins are envy, 
which is bad envy, which is usually found in the cutter in the tall poppy syndrome. Anger, the definition of anger is there's an obstacle uh, in your way and you can't remove it. That's why you get angry. And how it relates to the tall poppy syndrome is that there's another person in your way preventing you from the promotion. So you want to cut that person down. So that's bad anger. Positive anger would be anger makes you actually focus. So good anger would be that person is a little better than I am. I'm going to spend my energy working harder, coming in early, leaving late, having all my work done. Anger can be positive, once again, if we look at the positive-negative aspect. And the last of the three deadly sins that are most commonly found in the cutter is laziness or sloth, S-L-O-T-H. Those are three of the seven deadly sins. Now, interestingly enough, the cutter through moral justification feels that he has the right to cut down a tall poppy. And here we find three other reasons that he feels justified in cutting those poppies down. And that's because of pride or hubris. Somebody becomes too big for their britches. That's pridefulness. The next would be greed, which of course in America is a very common reason to, you know, you get greedy and you cheat people and we just have that cryptocurrency fraud going on. That's an example of the tall poppy syndrome, somebody being tall poppy because of his egregious activities, which involve pride, number one, and two, greed. And then the third is lust. Uh, there's a lot of the media was cut down in the Me Too movement, and that was for a lot of pride in almost all those men, some greed, but lustfulness. So those are three deadly sins. So we have three found in the cutter, three found in the tall poppy who uses those negative emotions, and then the cutter feels justified in cutting that person down. The only sin we don't mention in the tall poppy syndrome is gluttony. Those make up the seven deadly sins, and six of them are commonly found in the tall poppy syndrome. In Christianity, especially Catholicism, the way you modify your bad behavior is to look at the opposite, which would, in envies would be kindness. And so kindness is the antidote to bad envy. Kindness, for me, is certainly one of the most necessary and should be the one of the most prevalent virtues. One, because my own opinion, once again, is em the emotion of envy is always on and it's very easy to be negative. And, and so to change that, uh, you just need to think of kindness.